So it's always nice to share an experience because I believe that the purpose of sharing those experiences is that you might one day take away something so that you can apply that in your own world. So it's really great to have Adam here today to talk a little bit about the experience of actually implementing technology, the benefits of that. Um, so we have a couple of questions and we're just going to wing it, really, aren't we? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Um, I know with digital transformation, particularly over the last few years, and certainly before that in 2020, Industry 4.0, there's been a lot of focus on, you know, what do we do with our operational expansion, our strategies, our overall digital transformation. So tell us a little bit about where you guys are at with your digital transformation strategy and when did it start, really? Yep, so it, it started probably before my time. So we're going back in back to 2014. Um, all of our sort of production data was all managed in spreadsheets. Everything was manually entered and manually reported out of spreadsheets. Um, there was a, a bit of a push to, to sort of automate, automate that and to, to bring that into some sort of a system and to have some tracking there. So um, they originally look, we started to look out the specs for a sort of production tracking reporting system. Um, and they sort of ran into a few roadblocks and realised they had to get a few things um, in place before doing that. So that's when they realised, well, we need a historian to track some of this real-time data. So that was the first sort of project that kicked things off. And that was kind of where I sort of started with Talison as, as a contractor, putting in uh, that sort of a system. Um, we took sort of the live data that was manually recorded out of the control system. At the same time, we had to upgrade the control system because it was too old to actually support those technologies. So we had an updated um, SCADA system, a fresh new historian, and we're collecting data. And then we were still reporting out of spreadsheets, but um, that data was then tracked and, and eas more easily readily available to people. So that was kind of their first taste of, of technology at that point. And I guess with that automation starting to kick in with the data collection, um, did that sort of start you to think about where you might go after that from a strategic approach? Um, not immediately. So that was sort of the first sort of um, taste of things. And then a lot of other things sort of, sort of on an as-needs base kicked up after that. So um, I was still a contractor until about 2019. Um, until then, I, that's when I sort of joined the company um, full-time as an employee. Um, we put in a lot of other systems. So we put in some, like, some downtime tracking systems. Um, and we, we sort of beefed up the reporting and it was all around just making people's day-to-day -day jobs easier. Uh, we knew we were sort of starting from a very, very low base. So we just had to build those sort of technologies up um, on, on a bit of a stack. So um, we didn't really, yeah, we weren't really strategic until then, we were very organic. Um, then sort of we started to ramp up, sort of 20, 2018 was about the time that the company started to rapidly expand. Um, there was a lot of things then on the horizon and that sort of cooled off over 2019, 2020. Um, and now we're sort of in this period of, of massive growth. Um, so where we sort of cooled off, we're now having to try and catch up. So um, yeah, we've sort of now gone to more of a strategic approach where we know sort of systems that we need to put in place. Um, and we still have to sort of balance the needs of the day-to-day -day business. There's always things that people want that we have to sort of help out with, but now we're sort of operating to a bit of a plan um, we've sort of developed a bit of an architecture, um, some strategic things to put in place to help meet those sort of business goals. And, and those business goals are basically um, a massive increase in production. So we're, we're definitely more than doubling our, our capacity. Uh, we're building a, a number of new plants. So some of our, our um, projects are around um, expansion and some of them are around just increasing technology and helping people do their jobs. And I guess um, culture. You know, where does culture, where does it become part of the DNA that the data, which is obviously ever increasing, um, how, do you, how do you do that, I guess, in a grassroots way, on a day-to-day -day basis? How do you start to see that people are taking that into your culture and making it part of your DNA? Um, it, it's really sort of just, just growing with the people. So as we've, we've got more people growing, uh, people are coming for other, from other organisations and they're, they're bringing their experiences with them and they're expecting things that we don't have. Um, so we've, we've had this at you know, where I've come from and it's been really good. So, so um, it, there's a lot, a lot of more support for it from, from the actual end users and demanding it. Um, and that's been supported by the growth of our team. So, so our team started out very small. There was five or six of us. 
Um, now there's about 20 of us, and by the end of next year there's going to be you know 30 plus um, of, of our team merged with some of the IT teams. So um, yeah, it, it's it's um, it's a bit of a mixture now of sort of the low level systems to help build that architecture up and to collect the data that we need to work with, um, and, and those sort of strategic things. So we're looking at. Um, We've got sort of some, some production management. So that, that first system that we tried to spec out in 2014 went in last year. So it took, you know, it took uh, eight years or thereabouts to actually get that system in. Um, we had to build all the stuff in, in, the, in the middle. So um, yeah, that, that, that sort of process of getting things in the right, the right order and that, that's how we now have to sort of manage things. So. And I guess um, the cloud, you know, it's it's, it's something that gets talked about some with some concern about cloud. Um, but where do you see that driving your overall digital adoption? Yeah, so we're, we're actually fairly new to cloud systems. So, so there was a lot, of, um, a lot of sort of hesitance and we wanted to have control over our data. And we saw that first of all as a, as a bit of a, a stepping stone where you know, we move to the cloud, we lose control. Um, and that was our first sort of reaction. Um, but now we've sort of realised that you know, we can still maintain control of our, our, of our data. We do have a mix of on-premise and cloud systems. So uh, the, cloud, the cloud systems that we're actually putting in, so we've got some, um, we're using the, the Insight product for um, sort of real-time sort of view from people that, that are walking, they're not at their desk, they're out on the field, um, they're at home, they're looking at things, they're, they get the, a live view of what's going on uh, operationally on their phone or, or wherever they are. Um, so they can make those sort of decisions. Um, same sort of thing with our sort of production data. Now we're looking at data warehousing, and that's all in the cloud because it makes it accessible to, to anyone anywhere. And we've actually found it's actually it's good for on the security side of things too because all of those on-premise systems, if people aren't actually at their desk, they're on their phone, they're working from home, they're doing all of these things to get access to that data. They've got to we've got to get them, let them into the network, and that comes with a lot of security implications. So. Um, having us push that selected data out and up to the cloud makes it more accessible um, for people. It's easier for them to work with. Uh, there's less sort of hurdles to jump through to get to what they need to. And it's good for us from a security point of view because we know what they can access. They're not getting access to our core systems. We're not opening ourselves up for you know, unnecessary you know, attacks or, or vulnerabilities. So. Better bang for your buck. Um, pit to port, connected devices, operational control, um, more, th more data than ever before. Um, how do you ensure you have the right real-time data available for those scheduled or unplanned uh, decision-making moments? Well, we don't have a crystal ball, so you can't actually tell what data you're going to need in the future. So we, we basically take the approach of let's try and just capture as much as we can. Um, we know that there are things in the future that are coming. We've got plans for sort of some predictive analytics and some, some better, better use of our data, um, optimizations for plant. Um, so we know that we're going to need to use that data in the future. So historical data to train systems and all of that sort of thing. So um, we basically have to try and make sure that we capture as much as possible um, at the time. And if, we, if we're in doubt of whether we need it, we capture it. So um, that's kind of how we, we sort of, um, we sort of try to, to make sure we capture as much as we possibly can. Yeah. So we know the statistics around the data, you know, 50% of the entire data has been created in the last few years and they're predicting a double up again before 2024. So it sounds like you're on the right track. Um, anything else you want to talk about when it comes to, to data and managing that volume? Um, I think our biggest sort of the biggest thing I'm looking at now is is there's so much coming online and we can't have a handle on everything so the, the, we're still a fairly small company and a, a small operation so things do happen that I'm not aware of until the last minute and I'm trying to get a hold of you know what's what's being collected and what systems are being put in and, and um, what what cloud systems do we have out there that I didn't know about um, and, and when when I can get a hold of the data what I'm, I'm looking at is is where is it where does it become valuable? So you might have some sensors out in the field that are collecting a ton of raw data. That means absolutely nothing and probably will never mean anything. You've got to look at where that value is added and it might be added um, after some post-processing. There's some bespoke algorithms and, and that sort of thing. So um, 
sort of keeping in mind of where we want to sort of capture that and where we want to push that into our platform. So we do try and push everything through our, our platform, through our, you know, our historians and our databases to make sure that we have control over the data that we, um, we are collecting. And I guess uh, lastly, um, where do you see things going in five years? You'll have to crystal ball this one. Um, <laughs> across the mining companies and, you know, do you think we're moving quick enough? Do you think the companies are, are getting there? Um, well, we're not. I, I can say that for sure. Um, we're sort of trying to now balance out. Um, there's only so much change that a company can handle. So I, I've got a very, very full roadmap of, of a lot of projects. and. And we found that the limiting factors, factors are um, people to be involved in the projects to make sure that they get done, done right, um, and then the amount of change you can, you can throw on people. So that's the sort of limiting factor. Um, we're trying to move as fast as we can with those constraints because, like I said, there was that sort of slowdown period where we sort of took our foot off a little bit and probably shouldn't have taken our foot off because it would have probably got us you know, two years ahead of where we are today. So, I think we're one of those companies that's probably trying to catch up a little bit um, to sort of uh, get to where we need to be, but keep in mind that the, the sort of the changes that we're trying to um, impose on people and the, the new systems and the new things that they've got to get used to, um, it, in the end it benefits everybody, but um, there is that sort of the training and the onboarding and, and all of that process that goes along with introducing any sort of technology. and. And through all of our projects, that's been the most difficult thing. It's not getting the technology in and working, it's getting the technology in, working, used and accepted. Uh, and that's the hard part. And um, that's really what's, what's, what our challenges are and, and why we're probably not moving as fast as, as we, sh we could be or, or, or we would like to be. And I don't think we're alone in that. I think that there's many other companies that are probably in exactly the same boat as us. And that was all we're going to cover today. So hopefully you picked up something in that session that would be useful to you. And if you'd like to speak with me, I'm out on the stand um, along with the Aviva team. And I really appreciate sharing that openly and honestly. No worries, Thank thanks. you, Adam.